Born in 1906 to the lineage of Grand Duchess Elena Vladimirovna and Prince Nicholas of Greece and Denmark, she epitomized the regal heritage of her maternal great-grandfather, Emperor Alexander II. Inheriting her mother's resplendent beauty and possessing impeccable taste, she ascended to the pinnacle of British fashion as the consort of Prince George, the fourth son of George V in 1934, etching her name as an icon of the 20th century couture scene. Prince George and Duchess Marina radiated a mesmerizing elegance, earning renown as one of the era's most captivating couples. Marina captivated hearts not only with her physical allure and sartorial finesse, but also with her philosophical approach to fashion, viewing it as a manifestation of artistic expression rather than a mere commercial enterprise. Upon her arrival in the United Kingdom, Marina sparked a frenzy of admiration. Not only did members of the British aristocracy fall under her spell, but ordinary citizens, witnessing her debut at Victoria Station, fervently implored her to remain true to herself, unyielding to the pressures exerted by her royal in-laws who harbored reservations about her style and popularity compared to the Duchess of Kent, Marina remained steadfast in her identity. Yet, amidst the tumult, she possessed a treasure to unveil, a magnificent aquamarine floral tiara crafted by the hands of French artisan Georges Fouquet in 1908. Originally fashioned as a broad enamel hoop adorned with sizable diamond blooms, each centerpiece featured a lustrous oval aquamarine, accented by pearl-studded petals. Debuted at the 1910 Brussels Exposition, the tiara's journey into the Duchess of Kent's possession remains shrouded in mystery. Though she graced several portraits donning the tiara, its design had undergone modification, discarding the enamel hoop in favor of a satin foundation embellished with aquamarine floral motifs. Among the Dukes of Kent's prized possessions was a pearl ensemble comprising a tiara and earrings a mosaic of fragments resembling delicate floral clusters on slender stems. Upon my initial encounter with them, I was struck by their resemblance to glistening apples. Crafted in 1890 for Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna, this exquisite set bore witness to her affinity for unique adornments. However, for reasons unknown, she chose not to don the ensemble, opting instead to bestow it upon her daughter on her wedding day. Elena Vladimirovna, in turn, passed down the pearl set to her youngest daughter upon her union with the Duke of Kent. Such was the intricate journey undertaken by these jewels, yet their odyssey did not culminate there. Allow me to delve deeper into the tale of the tiara. Originally comprising 17 circles, two were subsequently repurposed into elegant earrings, a decision I deem quite astute. The tiara's base was ingeniously rendered more pliable to facilitate its transformation into a necklace. Princess Marina held this set in high esteem, gracing ceremonial occasions and balls with its resplendent presence. Notably, she adorned herself with pearls to commemorate the wedding anniversary of Dutch monarchs Juliana and Bernhard. The set's next custodian was Princess Alexandra of Kent, who from her youth exuded an irresistible charm when bedecked in pearls. Alexandra's fondness for pearls only deepened over time, evident in her extensive collection of pearl-adorned jewels, seamlessly complementing our set. Regrettably, the delicate pearl tiara found itself among the jewels liquidated by the Dukes of Kent to settle a substantial inheritance tax. The unforgiving laws of the land demanded this sacrifice, underscoring the poignant farewell to a treasure steeped in a rich, enigmatic past. The identity of the current owner remains shrouded in mystery, yet I trust that this custodian recognizes and preserves the magnificence of these Russian pearls. Moving on to another captivating piece from Princess Marina's collection, an exquisite tiara crafted by Cartier in the early 1900s. While its precise provenance eludes us, it is believed to have been acquired by the Duke of Kent for his beloved wife. Delicate diamond curls intertwine with floral motifs, each crowned with a resplendent pearl. Originally petite in size, the tiara underwent a transformation, with the addition of a lower tier of first-rate pearls, enhancing its allure. In my estimation, this modification only served to augment the tiara's splendor. A cherished favorite of Princess Marina, it graced numerous events, accentuating her attire with its timeless elegance. Official portraits immortalized the tiara's early days, offering a glimpse into its storied past. Per Princess Marina's wishes, the tiara passed to her youngest son, now adorning his wife, 
who, much like her predecessor, ensures its prominence among her jewels. Also nestled within Princess Marina's trove were star-shaped hair clips. Some liken them to orange blossoms, but to me they evoke celestial luminaries. Widely believed to have been bestowed upon the Duchess by her mother, Grand Duchess Elena Vladimirovna. Princess Marina graced numerous occasions adorned with diamond stars, each time radiating a captivating allure. Nestled amidst her dark locks, these celestial ornaments exuded a remarkable blend of delicacy and opulence. The daughter of the Duchess, Alexandra, also donned these stars on occasion, yet their fate following Marina's passing remained shrouded in mystery. Despite leaving her daughter scant jewelry, the diamond stars have remained unworn in recent times. However, tiaras were not the sole adornments favored by our heroine. She also held a penchant for earrings. The jewelry of choice for the youngest daughter-in-law of King George V and Queen Mary of Tech boasted the classic girandole design. This intriguing term, originating from the French language and popularized by 18th century fashionistas, signifies a candelabrum adorned with crystal pendants or intricate sculptural elements. Its artistic connotation, a sheaf of water jets, aptly captures the essence of this ornamental piece. With the rise of voluminous dresses, open necklines, gloves and wigs in court fashion, substantial earrings embellished with three pear-shaped pendants seamlessly complemented the era's aesthetic. While strikingly opulent, Girondole earrings were impractical due to their weight, prompting their transformation into lighter versions with three pendants by the early 19th century. By the 20th century's advent, virtually every noblewoman possessed a cherished diamond pair. Shortly after her marriage to Prince George of Wales, Princess Marina received a magnificent gift from her mother, a pair of spectacular diamond girandole earrings. This elegant jewelry set comprises detachable pear-shaped pendants encircled by old-cut diamonds, flanked by movable pendants of similar design. Measuring 8.8 .8 centimeters in length, the earrings exude timeless sophistication. Although initially crafted in the 1770s for Empress Catherine the Great, they found their way into the collection of our heroine's grandmother, Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna. Yet such acquisitions were hardly surprising, given the daughter-in-law of Emperor Alexander II's renowned fondness for jewelry. These earrings held a special place in the heart of the Duchess of Kent, who frequently adorned herself with the diamond pair her inaugural appearance wearing this gift from her mother occurred during the coronation of King George VI in 1937. Following was a remarkable photo session captured by English photographer Cecil Beaton, featuring Princess Marina alongside her sisters, Princess Olga of Yugoslavia and Princess Elizabeth, Countess of Tering Jettenbach. Even after the passing of her husband, Prince George, Marina remained an active member of the British royal family. Thus, it comes as no surprise that the coveted diamond pair continued to dazzle high society ladies worldwide. These earrings graced the Duchess of Kent during her tour of the Far East in 1952, her visit to Athens, and the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. Upon Princess Marina's demise in 1968, the diamond girandole earrings passed to her eldest son, Prince Edward, Duke of Kent. His wife, Catherine, was featured in several official portraits adorned with her mother-in-law's legacy. From the 1960s to the 1990s, the new Duchess of Kent donned these magnificent earrings at official state occasions, whether it be the opening of Parliament or Royal Jubilees. However, by the mid-1990s, the ducal couple encountered significant financial difficulties leading to the discreet sale of the Girandole diamond earrings. In a surprising turn of events in 2000, the jewelry pair appeared at a Christie's auction, albeit with four large diamonds in each earring replaced by imitations. Despite this, Lotno, 119 inches fetched 39,950 pounds, eventually finding its way to London's antique salon, SJ Phillips. S.J. Phillips has since leased out the antique earrings to various clients. Notably, in 2007, the jewellery adorned Kim Kardashian at a Hollywood Lifestyle Awards party and later at the premiere of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Socialite Daphne Guinness also borrowed the earrings for Alexander McQueen's funeral in 2010. However, 
The antique salon's website no longer showcases the sought-after jewellery. Instead, under an anonymous five-digit article, only a pair of central pendants is listed, described as earrings drops with diamonds 19th C. England, approximately 1770.